Hi, um, I've been wanting to do this for quite a long time now. Uh, but I guess, I don't know. I, I think I'm sad to say, but I, I think I was, I don't know if I was ashamed or, I just felt bad, bad admitting. I mean, a lot of people who know me know what, what our family has gone through, or is going through. But I actually want to highlight the raw truth of it all. So this is about my daughter. Um, she is 15. She is currently in a low secure unit under a section three. Low secure sounds like it's um, not very secure, <laughs> low secure. Actually, in, in theory, what it means is that she is unable to leave where she is. It's a mental health hospital. She ended up in there after um, wanting to and attempting to commit suicide at 15 years of age. Uh, she tried several times. She had been in a um, tier four unit, which um, she didn't need to be under a section three to be in, but she'd been in there in one of those for a few months and basically they said, nothing wrong with her, can't help her. Now, we've known for a long time that there is there, there was something that wasn't quite right whatever right is, whatever normal is. We, as a family, had a lot of difficulties. Um, she's a very, very, very bright girl. And let me just get this out to, uh, at the beginning that uh, we love her. We love her to bits. And um, one of the reasons why I'm making this video and why we're doing everything that we're doing is because we just want her to be happy. We want her to have the best life she can have we want her to have life so um yeah a bit of background she she we've struggled for a lot of years we had um a lot of tantrums outbursts difficult times times that we couldn't understand deal with properly led to a lot of frustration a lot of anger a lot of things that you know my husband and myself aren't proud of but we didn't know um she ended up getting diagnosed with Tourette's syndrome not coprelia where they swear um that's a different type she she um had a lot of motor tics and um she she would have a lot of facial tics a lot of things that she was um very it, it made her very conscious of herself at a an age being a teenager where naturally you're very conscious of yourself um and then she was diagnosed with asperger's there's there's a whole lot more that goes to it but i'm not gonna load it all on to you now but then she ended up with a um, a medical diagnosis of a condition that condition that's not particularly um, widely diagnosed. It's quite often misdiagnosed. It's um, POTS for short, which stands for postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. Um, it's where the autonomic nervous system effectively malfunctions and the blood vessels below your heart which would normally if you from when you go from sitting to standing they'd constrict to keep the blood up in your brain people with pots don't have that ability the um, blood vessels don't constrict the blood pools in either the abdomen or the feet and subsequently a lot of them can end up, um, a lot of the sufferers can end up passing out 
which is what happened to her. The first time she passed out, she ended up with a black eye. Mm. Um, every time she would stand up, get out of bed, she would end up passing out. Um, she ended up in a wheelchair. I mean, that, that that is just one of the many symptoms. There's a lot of other symptoms, um, gastro symptoms, fatigue, um, memory fog, brain fog, um, lots of things, lots of things that go with it, lots of things that are difficult for an adult to deal with, let alone um, an adolescent. So suffice to say, she ended up, sorry, I'm just trying to move my cat, she's trying to <laughs> say hello. Um, suffice to say, she ended up with a lot of mental health conditions and and it ultimately ended up in her wanting to end her life which as a parent I'm sure that anyone who's got children will understand is a horrific thing to have to deal with she took overdoses she wanted to try and jump out of the car when we were driving along she tried to jump on the um, dual carriageway near ours um, she took herself off during the night, walked around until four o'clock in the morning until myself and the police could track her. Um, you know, m m many, many things that somebody who is suffering, suffering with mental health might end up doing. So she ended up, I'm, I'm going to cut this a bit short now because it's been six, seven minutes. She's, she's been in a, um, a tier four unit she's now after nine months of being out of the tier four unit she ended up in a low secure unit or sorry in another tier four unit then got sectioned and put into a low secure unit because they couldn't keep her safe neither could we um and she she was trying to abscond and um trying to get on the railway track and throw herself in front of a train um so she ended up in a, a, a low secure unit and she has suffered ever since. And that's, that's really probably the crux of this video um, to, to A, raise awareness of mental health, um, but also the lack of resources within mental health, which I think a lot of people that are suffering will understand um, but there are people out there that don't actually realise this, that don't actually know how bad it is. She's um, she's in her fourth unit now. Uh, the first one was the one where she was for a few months and then came back home for nine months. Then she got put into a place in Chelmsford, brilliant place, but um, not secure enough for her. Then she got put into a place called, and I'm not going to... Um, feel bad about naming and shaming. She got them to a place um, called Huntercombe in uh, Norwich, which by all accounts, personally, oh, crikey, <laughs> in my own opinion, was a good setting, but they had um, some security issues and that got shut down, unfortunately. And all the children that were there then got moved on to um, various other places. She then got put into a place that offered emergency, um, if you like, um, placements. It was an ad adult um, mental health unit and they have offered adolescents, which wasn't ideal, but we, we really didn't have any other choice. Um, and I'm not going to name and shame them because, in my opinion, they've 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 drawn the short straw. They um, have tried to open up to help these vulnerable children, and they weren't geared up for it. The um, adult health mental health sector is completely different from the adolescents. Um, we're now six months six and a half months into them being open and they are finally getting things on track but what I want to say is that 
even in these places where we entrust our child and um, the health, their well-being and everything else, even there they can still go wrong. We're all human, um, you know, we, we, we all make mistakes. But as a parent, hearing that your child has been left head-banging um, for as long as she has to the point of it causing a massive swelling to the, the, her forehead to the point she needed to go to hospital and have a CT scan and has ended up with black eyes, bruising, even gone to the bottom of her nose. Uh, it's heartbreaking. I mean, everything about it is heartbreaking, but to hear these things, you just feel powerless. You just feel, you, you know, you just want to go and, and, and take her out of there and wrap her up in cotton wool and do things that you've tried to do for all her life. Things that, sorry, things that have, um, things that haven't been enough, you know. We, we've tried all this, we've tried all this for many, many years. And, uh, and then have another call up tonight to say that another patient there has square on hit her in the face, punched her in the face into the area that was, had previously been swollen and, um, She'd been screamed at for, for 10 minutes, told that she should kill herself. She shouldn't be here. You know, again, you just want to take her out of there. You want to, you want to protect your child. But how do you? <sighs> how? I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that would, criticize me my husband you know us as a family for what we're doing there are probably people out there that would empathize with us um there are people out there that would say oh you're so brave i couldn't do that if it were me would you know what you would you would you have no other choice it's your child you do whatever you can we're in it for the long haul um she, we, we're getting her moved. She's being moved to somewhere else very soon. And we are praying, not that I'm a religious person, but I am praying to a, a higher place that this will be the last time and that this place will give her the help she needs and will be there to support her the whole way through. So, in short, what I thought I'd do is I'll do, I don't know, weekly updates, updates, because I know that I'm not the only one out there that goes through this sort of thing, that's going through this. 